Well, here we are. We're live. We're live again. I gotta get a light on. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. I need this light on to get a little better. I got a better picture. It's a little grainy because the light's a little soft. Hang on one second. Let's get a little more amplification in the situation. There we go. As usual. Oh, well, listen, we're going to do what we can because it's a little darker in here than I want it to be. I'll get some light on the situation in a minute, but uh, we're going to go live right now because we promised we would. And in my St. Mary's soccer coaching shirt, because I just coached yet another game. And, uh, and I'm a little bit tired, but we're going to have a blast tonight. First and foremost, let me tell you something. The new video clip went up on my Facebook page. Last I checked, it was, I don't know, 15 or 16,000 views. Go share it. <clears throat> it's called, my teacher called me dumb, which is true. In life, I was called dumb by my teachers because I couldn't hear and they thought I was dumb. And you'll see the bit, it's very, very funny. Also, I've got some stuff going up and I'm gonna make this announcement now. So I taped the show and now I'm gonna tape the special, and we're gonna put it up on Netflix. We're gonna put it up on Netflix, so look for an announcement in the next couple days as to when we're gonna reshoot it. I'm gonna shoot it right at the club. So I want you to help me spread the word. I want you there. We're gonna use a great group to shoot it. Mike K and Ted from K Sound will be there. Our friend Andrew and Marcus from Mophi TV will be there. We will shoot an amazing special and have a blast at the Stress Factory Comedy Club. And I'm gonna tell you something, it's the best COVID hour out there. I don't mind saying it. I've always been shy to say it. I don't give a shit anymore. This is some funny, funny material. These are my daughter's glasses. Anyway, also coming up, uh, this is important, a story tonight about our very fun night last night at O'Bramnick's a bar in Westfield that you will never be invited to. O'Bramnick's is the bar at Assemblyman, soon to be Senate, uh, Senator John Bramnick and his wife, Patricia. Joining us there were some of the comedy uh, fans and comics from around New Jersey. Former Governor DeFrancesco joined us, former Governor, uh, Richard Cody joined us. Current Governor Philip Murphy was there. It was a great night. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. And I'll tell you about how when I'm at Abramnick's, I do something I don't do anywhere else. And I've only been there a handful of times. It's fantastic. There last night with Buddy Fitzpatrick, Joe Piscopo, Rodney Laney, Aaron Jackson, Aaron McGuire, uh, Gary Delena. I'm gonna forget people. Uh, Joe Piscopo, if I haven't already said it, the politicians also there. Uh, oh, jeez. Wow. Susie Yanga from Catch a Rising Star. Uh, Gene Nagel from uh, Scottish Comedy Cove. Uh, who else was there? I'm missing names. Oh, Mike Marino was there. Uh, Buddy Fitzpatrick. Gary Delena, uh, I'm gonna miss some, I apologize. I'll figure it as we go along, but what a great night. An awesome night out. And I'm excited, it was just a great time. Those of you joining us already, let me say hi to you. I don't know who's here yet. I see a good little group. Get more people here because we're gonna tell some fun stories tonight. So tell people to join us. And uh, if you haven't been to Bramnick, you gotta try and make it there. You gotta try and get on John's good list. John Bramnick is a Hysterical comic. He's an assemblyman running for Senate. He's a successful attorney. And above all that, he is one of the best human beings in New Jersey leadership position. Phil Murphy, great guy, showed up there last night not knowing how 
uh, comics would receive them because let's face back, comics are not always gracious to uh, political leaders. But Phil was there and he was great. And uh, listen, man, you got to give the guy credit. If this has been a real storm to weather, and whether you think he did a great job or a bad job, doesn't matter. He worked hard, and nobody uh, would have done a perfect job. So big, big ups to John and Patricia Bramnick for putting that together, and uh, big ups to Phil Murphy for coming and saying hello. Really, really appreciated. And if I missed you when you were there as a name, I sincerely apologize. I'll think of it during the night. <clears throat> so, Vicky and I are in the midst of redoing the house, and we have no furniture. No furniture. Now, in our living room for going on six weeks. And Vicky will not break down and order furniture. She said she likes the room the way it is because it's uncluttered. And I'm like, it's been cluttered because you can't live in the living room. It's behind me. If I took you in there now, you'd see it's barren. I finally put a chair in there that we're getting rid of. And the chair's got to go in the garbage. And she said to me, ooh, I think I like that chair in there. I'm like, oh, you're making me crazy. The woman's making me crazy. Oh, by the way, if you missed the Vicky Mini Live show this last week, boy, what a great show. Ty Rainey. And Chris Johnson killed, killed on stage. Joe Coon and the Hungry Hounds were on fire. More than all that. And I don't like saying this because people think, oh, he's like a sucker. Vicky killed it. So much fun to work with her. And the Vicky Mini Live show is back. And it's better than ever. And now we are, just so you know, now we record it. And we're going to take clips and put them up. Because... Doing it live is fun and all, but <clears throat> a lot of moving parts with the five camera shoot. This is easy. It's me. It's you. It's easy, but having a full production there is tough. So we built the kick-ass studio there, and it's pretty amazing, but it's still a lot to do it and put it out there live. That's why nobody does live late night with the exception of Kimmel, uh, who... However, they figured it out. They got a bigger budget than me. I'm suspecting. If you know Jimmy Kimmel, tell him I should be on a show live. In fact, I'm going to ask all of you. They're, they're, I'm going to ask you to get the word out to Kimmel, Fallon, uh, Colbert, uh, whoever the other guys are. Cohen. I have not done late night television. I have never pursued late night television. And now I'm starting to think I'm an idiot. I should pursue it. Also, if you have a favorite podcast, Bill Burr, Bill Burr, okay, and Rogan has talked about it a ton of times, send an email to those people for me and say, hey, get Vinny Brand on the show. <clears throat> I feel pretty relaxed and comfortable, so if I did Kimmel live, I think I'd be a blast. Like, I don't think I'm going to get nervous about that. Uh, and just so you also know, some big, big news, Russell Peters will be joining us in Bridgeport, uh, Memorial Day, uh, Two weeks after Memorial Day. Uh, also, you need to know this. You need to listen to me. Memorial Day weekend in New Brunswick. Shula King will be with us. And in Bridgeport, the New York Kings of Comedy. Listen, these are some fantastic shows. This week, one of my favorites in each club. Uh, Darren Fleet is in New Brunswick. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Bridgeport. And Jessica Kirsten is Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Bridgeport. A little quick side note, a little sad note, a little funny story about the club and kind of ties into what happened today. Uh, Charles Groden, who I'm a big, big fan of, passed away today. And here's why Charles Groden gets into this story tonight. Number one, his daughter, Marion Groden, very funny comic uh, and friend. Uh, it's her dad. But Charles Grodin was probably one of my favorite comedic actors. And he was a super talented guy. I don't even know him personally. I wish I did. Uh, I probably could have pressed for a meeting. But that's obnoxious. I never did. But here's a little interesting story. So the very last movie I watched my mother was in the hospital toward the end of her life. And... 
me and Vicky and Lori and Michelle snuck pizza and beer, cheap, my mother didn't drink beer, and coffee into the hospital room, into the cancer ward at Riverview Medical for what we knew would be one of my mother's uh, last nights where we could all be there. And we went in and we spent time, you know, talking and laughing and just, you know, celebrating her life. And then uh, my mother wanted to watch a movie. So we put on one of my favorite movies of all time, Midnight Run with Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro. Grodin is absolutely hysterical, as is De Niro in the movie. It's a great movie if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, watch it again. About halfway through the movie, Laurie and Michelle got tired and went home. And my mother said, well, you know, I guess we're gonna watch, not watch the rest of the movie. I said, no, no, we're watching the rest of the movie. And I stayed and I watched the end of that movie and we laughed and laughed and laughed. And that was the last movie I saw my mother. Hang on, my battery died. I get a little more juice here. What the hell is going on? Why won't that charge? So annoying. Hang on, people. This is why you need a production team. You need a production team to do this shit. Because I don't have my stuff together. Am I battery charging? I can't even tell. Battery. Google. Jesus! Why won't this charge, Vicky? Can you help me? So annoying. I need the right house back together. I need the house back together so I can be where I have to be. All right, charging. Good. The charging, we got some more light. I apologize. My house is a disaster. A little more light. And, uh, and we got a battery, which makes it important. So that was the last movie that I saw my mother. And listen, it's something really special about a comic actor and a movie that can make someone who knows they're dying laugh. And that's a gift. And Charles Grodin, I, I hope your family knows how much you meant to people. And I know me personally, uh, it's, it's a memory I have forever. Just laughing, just laughing hysterically. There's scenes in the movie where, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm telling you, Midnight Run is really funny. But there's a scene in the movie, if you know the movie, where Charles Burton goes, Jack, 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 two words for you, arterial sclerosis. And Robert De Niro looks back at him and goes, Here's two words for you. Shut the fuck up. But I, you gotta see it. You gotta see it. You gotta understand the whole movie and watch it. It is really great. So thank you, Charles Grodin, for all you did. And I'm sorry to see you leave, but hopefully uh, you're in heaven making, making them laugh. Uh, so there's that. My little tribute to Charles Grodin. And a quick little side note story about my mother and how that all tied into the club, which it always does. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> tonight I'm, I'm debating, like, what do we talk about? What do we talk about as we start to emerge from this pandemic mess? What do we talk about? And I decided tonight I would tell a story. Kathy, are you here? I decided I would tell a story uh, from the pandemic and how we managed and what we did and maybe a little interesting story about what's been going on. So here we go. Hey, Michelle. I hope you just heard that great story. Michelle, my sister, by the way, punched out. Hi, Denise. Uh, Michelle punched out of watching the rest of that movie that night. So Michelle did not watch the rest of Midnight Run with my mother, but that's quite okay. Cheryl Cade, how are you? Big ups to Alyssa Gogi, too. She's killing it in Bridgeport. Yes, Lori, she really is. Um, and thank you, Denise. Denise was at the show Sunday. What a fun thing. Hi, Ron Ginsberg was at the show. I gave Ron a bite of my hamburger. Ron Ginsberg is a regular. I was starving. Here's what happened. Hey, Lee, thank you very much. 200 stars, Lee. Jan Derricks, thank you. 50 stars. Denise, thank you. Lewis Smith, 99 stars. Thank you. 
So this is very, very funny. Uh, so, and, and, you know, Ron Ginberg does not know the line he crossed the other night. Ron, I couldn't tell you because I love you, but I was starving. I was starving. And I had the idea, this is a story I wouldn't tell, but Ron's here. So I had the idea to make a burger in the sous vide. Uh, we do our chicken sous vide at the kitchen at the club. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, so I said, I'm going to make a burger. And I put this burger together and I put all the mixings in. And I sous vide it. And I set it to eat after the show. And I am starving. I'm starving. Hey! Uh oh, hey, my sidekick. Hey! Hey! Ho! This here fella's got to go. <laughs> Say hello, everybody. Hey! Ho! This here fella's got to go. What has to go? Yeah. Why do you have to go? Kathy had a soccer game today. Ask mom. And, and Ryan Ginberg, don't go anywhere, Ginberg, because we're getting back to that story. So Kathy had a soccer game today, and she played like a rock star. A rock star. You play in a league that's eight and nine years old. Some of the kids you're playing are a full year and a half older. Oh, read Jim Batten books. Huh? They're good. Read Jim Batten. And did you have to elbow girl out of the way today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell me, tell me, you said you, you nudged her, right? Yeah. How'd you nudge her? Don't, no, don't spill my coffee. I won't. Hun, show the camera so it's on me. Don't spill the coffee. Careful, my coffee. It goes out. Okay. I figured out how to do it. She gave a good nudge. But, she... No, like this. Like, move! It's my camera. Okay, just do it. I, I can't. What do you mean? I cram. You're too close? Okay, she just she whacked over the shoulder. No, for you're better. crowding me. Okay, you gotta do it quick, hun. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sit down. I'm so not. anyway, so listen to me. That's uh, because she grabbed my hand, pulled me close, and then pushed me away. And what'd you do to her? Just tell the story. What'd you do? I did this. And you hit her hard, right? Yeah. Did you knock her on a can? I don't know. Do you like to knock people on their can? And we play for St. Mary's, right? Yeah. And we knock people on the can the way Jesus intended, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, go see Mom. I gotta finish. Uh, today yeah. I accidentally stepped on someone's um, foot and they screamed in pain and it felt good. <laughs> Just the way Jesus intended. Give me a kiss and say goodnight. Good night. Hey, ho, this year, fellas, got to go. Good night, baby face. Thank you. Tell mom I need a light bulb down here for my lamp. Mom, well, dad needs a light bulb. I need, I need more light. I need more light. The house is really ripped apart. So anyway, Ron Ginberg, back to you. All right. Ron Ginberg did not know. All right. And I love the Ginbergs. Okay, first of all, I love all the regulars. I love them all. But I made this burger that was, hi, Gina, that was absolutely delicious. And Ginberg comes in after the show. And he goes, hey, man, how you doing? And I cut the burger. And I had to give Ron a quarter of my burger, which I was fine with. But then there was another customer, and I had to give him a quarter of my burger. And then I gave Derek a quarter of my burger. Ginsburg started a run on my burger. I, I was starving, and the burger was unbelievable. I took it. I put a pad of butter on it. Good night, baby face. A pad of butter on it. Montreal seasoned it. Put it in the sous vide. Cooked it for 40 minutes, then hit it on the grill for 40 seconds each side. And what does Ginsburg do? He starts a let's all eat Vinny's hamburger movement. Ron, Ron, what the hell is wrong with you? Hey, good night, Birdie. Good night. Bye. Thank you, honey. So I don't know what happened, but I was happy. And Ron did like the burger. Then his wife came in and I go, Do you want a bite? And when you when you said no, I want to pick you up and hug you. And look at your husband and go, see, Ron? No, I don't want Vinny's dinner. Not sure. I'll eat your, Vin your dinner. The hell, Ginsburg? <laughs> but it was a good burger. And I'm just kidding. kidding. I don't really care too much. And Lori Green said the burger was very good. Lori, who tried it? You or Jay? I don't know if Jay tried it. And look at Ginsburg telling me the burger was delicious. I personally wouldn't know because I had a quarter of it. A quarter of my burger. Uh, but it was very good. So, anyway, uh, that's what happened on Sunday night. 
after a very long night. And what a fun night. I did all these different things. Yeah, here's how the show works, just so you know. Vicky and I go to the club. Vicky write down all the topics that we're going to talk about. And then we go up and we, and we do it all. And so people say to me, oh, you were good. You, I, 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 I tell everybody, listen, without Vicky doing that show, I'm lost, literally lost. And so she did a great job putting it together. It always makes me very happy. To work with someone who can be creative and bounce off is important. And we had Mike K, at, uh, Mike K from K Sound, and Ted from K Sound, who, you know, Ted reminds me so much of Barry J that I gotta somehow figure out a way to let Lynn be in his orbit for a minute because I feel like Ted K. Is Barry J coming back to me from the great beyond? Which would have been something Barry could do. If Barry could bust chops and come back, my God, he would. Let me just try one more time on this light. Please don't be mad at me. It's making me crazy. Making me absolutely nuts. I don't have the light that I want. You hear me wrecking the place? I'm wrecking the place. It's a bulb. It's a bulb. I'm doing all this work. And it's a bulb situation. You have to understand something. How, listen, I'm a disastrous mess as a human being. But being this disorganized is, is really even bad for me. Like, it's just making me crazy that we're this disorganized. The house is really ripped apart. And for a disorganized person like myself to think it's to rip apart, it's making me nuts. It's making me absolutely nuts. And, and again, I'm not organized. So here's the story I wanted to tell about surviving this thing because, you know, listen, we're through it now, right? I mean, for the most part, we think we're not going to have another massive shutdown. So we think we're through it for the most part. We think, okay. It's not going back the way it was. Any questions before I get into the story? Because, let's see, Ginsburg said, I can't believe Sharon won the contest. Sharon did win the contest. Jay did taste the burger. Uh, anything else, Jan Derrick? Vinny, I'm just making sure there are questions here. Uh, hello, great comedy New Brunswick guy, Vinny. Thank you, Vinny Vaughn. I wonder if that's Vince Vaughn. I wonder. Probably not, right? Vince Vaughn wouldn't be on my Facebook Live. He should, but he wouldn't be. So, <clears throat> you know, think about all the different things we did and all the trials and tribulations of getting over it during the pandemic. And this story just kind of makes me laugh. And many of you know the story, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So, you know, when it snows, someone has to go to the tent and sweep snow off the tent. Now, Derek, our manager, and Mark, our manager at that time, uh, and I, we all made a commitment to go to the tent and sweep snow off the tent during the first storm. All right. And Doug Jones, who is just a friend of the club, uh, and Jay has helped out. And, you know, everybody's like, okay, we're all going to go. We're all going to go. And we're going to do this job. And if it snows, we're going to sleep overnight. And, you know, I pack a bag and I get ready. Well, Mark... Mark mysteriously, at that time, come down with COVID that never got confirmed. Me, I'm in I'm in Middletown, and Derek, Derek Johnny on the spot, gets up there and goes to the first storm. Now, Derek gets there and he goes, "It probably won't be that bad. I got it. I'll do it myself. Don't come up." Now, Maddie had gotten in a small accident that day. So it didn't take a lot for me to decide to stay home and build a fire and not go. Well, the job ended up being a real son of a bitch. And Derek ended up doing that job by himself. I call him at midnight. He's like, ah, I've been out of 10, 7 times already. Doug Jones comes in and helps him to 
The storm goes all the way through the next morning. Derek says, you know, you come here in the morning. But by the morning, it was coming down. And Derek says, listen, don't even bother coming. I did it. I did it. I'm done. So I said, listen, Derek, the next snowstorm, I got it. You don't come. No matter what, I got it. And he goes, okay, that's fair. Well, within a week, we get calling for snow. And I tell Derek, I got it. You stay. And Derek's like, I'm fine. I can't go again. Well, it starts to snow. And we get like a, like a little, like a dusting. Not even a, an eighth of an inch of snow. And I don't have to go. I don't have to go, but I don't tell Derek that. I tell Derek, I went up. And then I tell him, Derek, that's my storm. I did it. You can't blame me for it being a shitty storm. Next storm is you. I'm this storm. Next storm is you. Well, <laughs> Derek, Derek's like, bullshit. I'm like, Derek, come on, man. You, you can't be like that. I got that storm. You get the next storm. It is what it is. Well, what happened is Derek calls Vicky and goes, you know, he went up there, but it wasn't even a bad storm. And, you know, I think that's wrong. And Vicky goes, Derek, he didn't go up there. And I'm like, why would you tell him that? Why would you throw me under the bus? Why? And so the next storm, I had to go in and do it by myself. But Derek did come in. And we stayed there. I think it was 37 hours. That was a monster storm. And we're in the green room taking turns trying to catch a little bit of sleep. But we had both be after all night long. And Derek puts on the Freddie Mercury story. Uh, I'm trying to think what the hell they call that movie. Um, you know, that whole Freddie Mercury story thing. I don't know what was in that movie. And every time I go outside, Derek finds that movie and starts it over again and again and again. And <laughs> it got to a point where Derek watched that movie six times in one night. And I came into Derek. Is there something you're trying to tell me? Is there some reason you're watching the Freddie Mercury story over and over and over? And of course, you're just giggling and laughing. But if, just a goofy thing. Not there's anything wrong with that. And then finally, at about 8.40 in the morning, it starts to let up a little bit. We have to stay a little bit longer. Now it's maybe 10, 30, or 11. They shut down all the vaccine centers. And what did Derek and I see? A Chinese kid on a 10-speed bike muscling through the snow to deliver Chinese food. <laughs> but the vaccine centers were shut. Don't tell me who's essential and who's not essential in New Jersey. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so that's a quick little story. Any questions? Or, no, someone just emailed me along. Hello, Vinny. I was with Vic DiPotato and Tommy at a show. Good time back in November. Met you. Okay, pal. You need 2021 honor police cards. Yes, Vinny Vaughn. I do need honor police cards because I am a bad driver. Corey Hobson. It was definitely a big storm. Yes, it was. Michelle sounds like Bohemian Rhapsody. Thank you, Michelle. Great movie, but not a movie you want to watch when you're stuck with your buddy shoveling snow for 36 hours in a row. You don't need to see Bohemian Rhapsody 54 times. Yes, Kim, we all love Derek. Uh, Phil Mantle wants to know for keeping the tent. Here's the deal. Yes, we're keeping the tent. And I'm staying outside for a while. I'm going to tell you why. Now, you know that many of you know this is our temperature. And you know many of us in our industry have wanted to be open uh, for a long time. And I've definitely been an advocate of opening up safely. Now, here in New Jersey, Phil Murphy is not dropping the indoor mask mandate, and he's not reducing distance. And a lot of people are giving him heat because many, many states have done it without a big uptick. <clears throat> Let me say this about how I feel. We've come a long, long way. Our industry almost, almost the worst, without exception. Entertainment, food and beverage. These two industries have been hurt 
more than any other industry that I can think of. Everybody paid a price. I'm not crying about it. <clears throat> but we've been hurt. And if we went back at this point, we would get hurt again. We'd get hurt again. So this is what I think we should do. I don't have a problem with Governor Murphy taking another couple of days, weeks, whatever he thinks, to get us to the next level. But to get to the next level, I think what would be reasonable is if we find ways to mitigate a future spread. Those ways might include UV lighting in your club so that when no one's there, the absence of movement turns your regular lights off and UV lights on. You know, the bathrooms, you go in the bathroom sometimes, the lights are out, then it sees you moving around and the lights pop on. Well, use that same type of sensor. When the lights go out because no one's in there, maybe UV comes on because UV lighting kills the virus. Maybe we, we install lighting like that and when someone leaves the bathroom and no one's in the bathroom, the UV light pop on. So you're constantly disinfecting the high touch common areas. Maybe we tell people, look, you gotta wear your mask when you're not at the table. Come in with the mask, take the mask off, sit down. Maybe the servers keep the mask on and maybe we reduce the distancing to say three feet and see if that doesn't help us do all the UV lighting, no one's around, flip those UV lights on and kill the vaccine or kill the virus. Between the masks and the servers, because the servers are the equivalent of the worker bee, going flower to flower, picking up, so the servers wear a mask, customers come in with a mask, take it off when you're sitting down, put it on when you leave the club. So you ain't not that high a hurdle to jump over after everything we've gone through. Maybe that wouldn't be so bad, right? UV lighting, keep the sanitation in place, reduce the distancing, increase occupancy a bit, ask people to be reasonable, right? And look, there's so many people that think they know everything. I don't think I know much, but I think that that's a more reasonable step than you know, the Palazzo went from, we can't get in bed, da, 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 to, oh yeah, we're opening up. Now look, it, how can it make sense to just go full out right now? How can it make sense? And you might be watching me saying you're an asshole, Vinny. But if we went back to where we were a year ago, it would be the end for so many businesses. Now, the original question was, will we stay in the tent? Yes, we will. Because I can open the sides. We built an amazing atmosphere. Just put a $40,000 video wall up. Why rush inside when outside is every bit as nice? Let's continue to push the number down and be reasonable. And to that extent, I think Governor Murphy is doing it right. Why, at this point, force the issue? We're into spring and summer. Uh, outdoor dining is amazing. Most places have been able to adopt, adapt, uh, and adopt new measures. I whooped those words in. And so why not? Why not just enjoy that at the club? The outdoor is just refreshing. Who the hell wants to be cooped up when you don't have to be? I'm sorry that I'm doing that uh, old Italian guy, like half-ass <laughs> regurgitation thing. So let's, let's try to be reasonable now. Let's continue. It's no big deal. It's not a big deal to wear the mask in until you sit down. Nobody gives a shit. In, sit down, take the mask off, enjoy your night. Get up, put the mask on, and walk out. Not that hard. Not that hard. And uh, and have the restaurants mitigate. Maybe you put UV sanitation in your ductwork, and you just do the things you can to kill that damn virus. Which, by the way, is gonna kill a million viruses. Listen, all this safety. Uh, let me tell you what's down in this country. The, the following diseases that are down: the flu. Diarrhea, cha cha cha, <laughs> beeps and butt. Uh, COVID. So maybe that would be the way to go, and maybe, maybe we could all support that. I hope we can, and uh, we will stay out there. And I will keep Vicky and I are committed to keeping the tent, 
all the way through next winter. So we're going to keep it forever. You know, good businesses learned new ways to survive during this. And I'd like to tell you that we're a good business. We're a good business. We, we worked our ass off. We survived it. I'm proud of everyone that did it. Hey, Vic, poke your head in here. Vic A. No, come out of here. Vic A. Just one second. We all see you. Vicky, please come in for one minute. So, you know, I'd like to tell you that, uh, that we should survive it. And we're going to stay out there for a long, long time. Let's see what we have here now. Some other comments coming up. Derek is a trooper. He really is. Michelle told me Bohemian, Rhap Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, you got a special decal. Thank you. I'd love that. Uh, hey, thank you, Matt. Uh, Vinny, thank you for that. Andrew Sigmund, Florida, pretty much wide open. Now Comedy Club. See, that's true, Andrew. Comedy Clubs are wide open in Florida. That doesn't make it as right or as easy as it is here. Florida is closer to the equator, and the, the virus dies faster there. And I'm not trying to be funny. I've, I've done a million COVID jokes, but outside, outside, the high heat, the longer days, it's harder for the, the virus to take root there. We are in a, a hotter area. Um, yeah, Steph was in a COVID stop the table. Very funny. Uh, thank you, Elba, for saying I love the tent. So, man, it's awesome. I thought you guys were at the forefront of comedy world. to keep the laughs going. Hats off to you, Vicky, Derek, and the crew. Thank you very much, Phil. That means more to me than you know. And listen, I think so many things are going to be better going forward. Live streams. Uh, I know this. Uh, we're going to keep on innovating. And in the fall, you'll be able to come to the club. Let's say we're all inside at that point. Let's say winter comes. We're still going to heat that tent. You come early, sit outside. You enjoy the big screen, maybe you watch a football game, maybe a basketball game, maybe you sit down and just enjoy a movie some night. The screen's amazing, K-Sound, the greatest sound company in the entire Northeastern Seaboard. You come in, you enjoy your night, that's gonna stay there. And yes, we'll have to go and scrape that tent clean and figure that out too. <clears throat> but that's, that's what you do, you just keep adapting and moving forward. Someone asked me the other day if I'm gonna run for governor. Yes, in four years, I'm running for governor. Uh, I think Phil is going to win another four-year term. And I don't want to see any comments that are negative. If you don't like somebody, leave it off Facebook. There's too much negative shit on Facebook. You, you want to bitch about something, call me up. All right, because the one thing I will tell you, and I said it to Phil, uh, and I'll say it to anybody, this has been the hardest time to do the job in a very long time. No one would have gotten it all right. Nobody. And Phil Murphy, whether you do or do not like what he did, worked his ass off. And he was head and shoulders above Andrew Cuomo, Bill de Blasio, and many, many others. So hats off to Governor Murphy. And when I disagreed with you, you knew that too. But boy, I'll tell you one thing. No one can say you weren't working your ass off and you got a lot right. So whatever you got wrong, call me and I'll straighten out. That's a joke. That part's a joke. So anyway, hats off to them. And yes, in four years, I'm going to run. I'm going to be bored uh, with what I'm doing. I'm starting to get a little bit more politically active. I was politically active 10 years ago when I ran for the Board of Ed. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> I might take a shot at my local town, or maybe I'll take a shot at an assembly seat. Right now, I'm hoping uh, that this election goes well for everybody, and that we get the leadership New Jersey needs. Uh, Lana Hall, thank you, and hello. Uh, hello for that. So, we are at the 40 minute mark in one minute, and I don't like to go over 40. I don't like it. A lot of you sent stars tonight, I appreciate it. I'm gonna ask you to please do me two favors. Go watch My Teacher Called Me Stupid. You can see it on all the Facebook pages. And do me a favor, take seven seconds and share it. Watch it and enjoy it first. And then share it. I have another clip going up, and we have Vicky and Vinny clips going up tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, that's important to us. I want you all to know something. <clears throat> this is from my heart. So you'll excuse me for getting sappy. 
I don't mean to get sad, but it's important. We all get caught up in this little bullshit dramas that life presents. All these little bullshit dramas, these little hurdles, politics, I hate this one, I hate that one, I'm offended, all this bullshit. Try and remember this in your life. Try and remember this. You got that little spat going with your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your best friend. You got some little bullshit going on. I don't want you to ask yourself a question when that's going through your head. Just ask yourself, when I'm on my deathbed, when I'm on my deathbed, and there's no more Vinny left, or whatever your name is, and you got this last couple of minutes, would you spend it on this bullshit problem that you're in? You're gonna lay there and go, I just wanna say, with my last breath, I'm still mad at you for the incident at the barbecue. And I'm gonna tell you the answer. You're not. You're not. You're gonna think back on it and you're gonna laugh. And you're gonna say, what I do? Wasting my time. So try to remember that those little bullshit problems that you're in are probably not worth your time. Make sure you make your time valuable. I told my 18 year old daughter the other day, I said, hey, you know, when it comes to these problems that we have, just communicate. And remember, at the end of your problem, if it's someone that you're with, just say, I love you. And I said this to her, I said, you're never gonna wonder if I love you. Because every time you leave my side, I make you give me a kiss. And I tell you every day, I love you. Every day. So when I'm gone, you're not gonna go, I wonder if dad loves me. And the best thing about it was, she didn't cry, she didn't get melodramatic. She looked at me and said, you know what dad, that's really good advice. And then she left for that kiss and make goodbye. That part I made up. <laughs> so these little bullshit problems don't wanna bother you. Think big things, think big picture, all right? And do something great for somebody else. With that in mind, this Saturday night up at Bridgeport, we're raising money for the Bluefish Blue Travel Baseball Team. So if you want to raise some money, the club is back in swing. We're doing that stuff. We're helping out organizations. Vicki and I have always helped out as many organizations as we could. I know some organizations are out there hurting for money. And if you need help, you reach out for me. You call me directly, 908 601 6976. I won't give my wife's number because uh, she thinks I'm nuts for doing it that way. But I want you to know something. You need to raise money. Your group, your organization, you call. We did a show the other night for the Rotary. It felt good to be out there doing things for people. We did a show for Trinidad Hospital just a couple weeks ago. It felt good. This Saturday, Bluefish Travel Baseball. Got to make some money for them. Feels good. Feels good. Let the bullshit go. Live your life and have fun. Any questions before I go out? Todd Harpen, thank you. Mark Plowden, thank you. Uh, Todd Harpen, hello, as always. And yes, Todd, we'll get together. Got some things going on right now. Uh, a little bit busy, but give me a shot tomorrow. We'll talk about it. You see my wife in the background? Did you see that? She's carting down. She's such a hard worker. I have to say something. I always give Vicky big ups. 5 a.m. in the morning and doesn't stop working till she lays down at night hardest working human being I know. Uh, thank you, Ron Ginsburg. You got my vote for senator. That's very nice. I don't know if I could be a senator. I might try and be an assemblyman or congressman first. I might run against uh, Frank Pallone at some point if I can. Um, and hang on one second. See if I can get Vicky to say goodnight. Hang on. <clears throat> hey, Vic. Vicky. on me. I'll see if I can't get her to come in just for a second. I love all you people. We're over time tonight. 44 minutes out. Uh, Lana Hall coming to club soon. Ryan Ginsburg. I'm not a grandfather yet. That big news is coming. Uh, first week of June. 
and we are gonna say goodnight. Tomorrow, I will drag Vicky on to a special live. I love you guys. Take a moment, tell the people in your life what they mean to you. Don't be shy about doing it. And know this, if you're here, if you're not here, if you've been in a club, you know I love you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. When I go, I want a big wake. A big wake. There's, there's two, two ways to have a big wake, everybody. Two ways. The first is to live your life in a way that people from all over the state want to come and pay their respects to you and be with you as you lie in state. That's the first way. The second way is to be such a jerk off that people come from miles around just to make sure you're dead. Now listen, <laughs> I want to go out that first way. I want a big wake, but I'm also selfish. I don't want any of you people at my wake. I'd, have to li I'd like to outlive all of you. <laughs> Jan Dirks, I love you. Uh, Phil Menda, I love you. Uh, Denise, I love you. Louis, Louise Smith, I love you. Gina, Ron, Lori, Jay, I know you're here somewhere. Phil, Kim, uh, Michelle, my sister Michelle. God, you know I love you, Michelle. You're such a good egg. I miss you. Coming down to see you soon. Vinny Vaughn, love you. Andrew Sigmund, you know I love you. Uh, anyone else here that I missed? Going down to the bottom here, Todd Hartpens. That's it. Uh, I will come to South Florida soon. And this is it for tonight. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Tomorrow, Vicky and I will do a very special five. And we will talk to you then. Good night, everybody. Share the love.